हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन इंजीनियरिंग दिस इज अवर फोर्थ वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग इन द प्रीवियस थ्री वीडियोस वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द फिजिकल पैरामीटर्स ऑफ वाटर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द केमिकल पैरामीटर्स ऑफ वाटर एज वी ऑल नो दैट इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द केमिकल पैरामीटर्स दीज पैरामीटर्स आर दोज दैट विल अफेक्ट द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द वाटर एंड ऑफकोर्स दीज आर द पैरामीटर्स विच फॉर्म द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ chemical compounds in water so we can say that the chemical parameters are because of some chemicals and such chemicals which are ready to combine are nothing but that are in the form of ions such ions are actually known as dissolved solids present in water whereas these solids are further classified to different categories according to their effect in water as alkalinity hardness whereas different type of metals also and some non metals also whereas in the first category as we have already stated that the chemical parameters are because of the dissolved solids hence we are going to study about the first parameter under the chemical properties that is dissolved solids present in water we have already studied in the previous lectures that in the supply water there are total three type of solids present the first type of solid are the suspended solids that are so small that they cannot be settled under gravity whereas the second category of solids are the dissolved solids whereas the third category of solids are the settleable solids among these three in the supply water as it is pumped first two parameters that are dissolved and suspended solids are present in the supply water but the settleable solids remain present in the bottom of the water source hence these settleable solids are not studied in the supply water engineering next moving towards the dissolved solids dissolved solids as we already mentioned that dissolved solids are actually present in the dissolved form and that is because of the presence of charge so you can say that these dissolved solids are present in the form of ions and what are ions as we all know that these ions are nothing but that are charge carrying matter are present in the form of ions and if we are going to give the examples of ions that are present in water you can see that there can be hypophosphate or there can be hyposilicate or there can be thiosulfate or there can be bicarbonate ion or there can be carbonate ion or there can be some metals like aluminum magnesium or zinc or calcium all these ions as these are present in the water you can see that all these and many more than these will comprise dissolved solids and as we are watching there charge you can say that as there is a charge present on dissolved solids these solids are actually responsible for the electrical conductivity of water and hence if we are observing an water sample then we can say that the electrical conductivity of that particular water sample will be directly proportional to the dissolved solids we have already studied that the that the suspended solids were measured in terms of milligram per liter so we can directly say that the unit of dissolved solids will also remain same as that milligram per liter but according to the observations from some experiments we have developed an empirical formula for the calculation of electrical conductivity of a water sample in micromo per centimeter at 25 degree centigrade as the dissolved solids in milligram per liter of that particular water sample divided by 0.65 this 
empirical formula is actually important for the objective exams not for the conventional exams already this formula is being asked in IES exams in the previous years so you can note down that it is an important formula for the objective exams as we have already discussed that the solids are dissolved solids or suspended solids these dissolved solids affect most of the chemical parameters or chemical properties of the water so we can say that dissolved solids affect chemical parameters of water and to list out the chemical parameters that are affected by the dissolved solids we can say that it will affect the alkalinity of water it will also affect the ph of water it will also affect the hardness of water whereas there are some chlorides fluorides also that we study whereas apart from this we also study about the copper zinc iron manganese that those are the metals so we can say that the dissolved solids comprises of all other chemical parameters of water so it is an important parameter for us and now we are going to move ahead with the next chemical parameter that is the ph ph is not a new parameter for us in engineering we have already studied about ph in the previous classes including the school and in the first year chemistry as we all know that this ph tells us about the concentration of hydrogen ion present in the water as we all know that water get dissociated into two categories of ions first one is the hydrogen and second one is the hydroxyl ion we can say that these two ions will remain present in the same concentration if this h2o is neutral so we can say that for a neutral water the concentration of h plus and OH- minus will remain equal for the neutral water but whereas if some agents that add or that promote the dissociation or the formation of one of these two ions then you can say that this balance of H plus and OH- minus will get disturbed and there are chances that H plus ion concentration will become more than the OH minus ion. If this is the condition, then such particular water solution is known as acidic solution. Whereas, if H plus ion concentration become lesser than hydroxyl ion concentration, such a solution is known as basic solution. To indicate whether the given solution is neutral, acidic, or basic we have we have defined a indicator and that indicator is known as ph this ph is actually nothing but that can also be written as the power of hydrogen ion that can also be written as the potential of hydrogen ion as it, should, it is actually representing us the concentration of h plus ions present in that particular water sample numerically or mathematically this ph is actually defined as the negative log of h plus ions concentration in water h plus ion concentration in water remember here that the concentration of any species is actually denoted in the square bracket hence we can say that ph will be equals to negative log of h plus ion remember here the base of log is base 10 so you can say that higher is the value of h plus ions concentration the value of ph will decrease so you can say that if h plus ions concentration will become equals to oh minus concentration remember here that the value of ph for such particular solution is 7 whereas we have already mentioned that there can be three possibilities you can say that if h plus and oh minus are equal the value of ph will be equals to 7 whereas if h plus is more than oh minus you can say that 
pH will be lesser than 7 whereas if OH minus is more you can say that the pH value will be greater than 7 so you can already say that for acidic solution the pH value will be less than 7 for basic solution the value of pH will be greater than 7 and for the neutral solution the value of pH is equals to 7 what is the meaning of acidic or neutral or basic solution that is written here in this particular table or box so now moving ahead towards the pH that if we know about the value of pH we can directly say that whether H plus is more or whether OH minus is more in that given water solution but how to measure the value of pH we have already studied about many different methods that are related to the measurement of pH one of the most previous or basic method was the use of litmus paper whose color changes to blue to red and when the color will be changed to blue to red or red to blue we have already studied and it is not worthy to learn about this in engineering level so now moving ahead to the level of engineering the method to measure the pH is nothing but that is the use of an instrument that is known as potentiometer in the first year of chemistry we have also studied about the method of titration by the use of some indicators and the most commonly used indicators that were used in the chemistry were the phenolphthalein and one another indicator was the use of methyl orange what we have to remember here is not only the name but we should also remember what is the pH range in which these indicators are actually used for example there's a phenolphthalein oh sorry there's a phenolphthalein is actually a basic indicator and it is used when the pH is between 6.8 to 10.3 its color changes from yellow to red whereas the phenolphthalein whereas the methyl orange is actually an acidic indicator which is used in the pH range of 2.8 to 4.2 and its color changes from red to yellow to remember you can say that the color change is just reverse as that of phenolphthalein these two are the most important indicators that we use other than these two there are many other indicators that are used generally so remember the name of these indicators remember the color change and the pH range one most important relation in the well in the pH is related to the summation of pH and pOH remember that for any particular aqueous solution the summation of pH and pOH is equals to 14 where pOH is defined as similar as that of pH that it is the negative log of OH minus concentration also remember that pH is the negative log of H plus ions concentration but as this square bracket is actually indicating the concentration of given species also remember that the unit of these concentration given is in terms of moles per liter we have we find the concentration in many different units that we are going to study in our next videos so please keep watching all the videos and subscribe the channel to get the notification for the next videos also share with your friends those who are also looking for such videos to help them out in their studies i hope all these videos help you in every aspect both in the competitive as well as for the university exams. Thank you for listening. Keep watching. Bye-bye.